you workers of iniquity, those that are in sin, those that are sinners. See, God wants to take you from being a sinner to a saint. That's it. That's that's the reason why he died, not so you could keep sinning and, oh, well, the blood of Jesus was shed for me so I can keep sinning and repent. No, that's not the gospel. That's what it's like. And, you know, I'm going to say this. That's what it's like. I'll live my life to serve the Lord as you, much as I possibly can. And, yes, I am out drinking right now. You, you, see, and that shows that you don't really serve the Lord. I do, that's but the, the thing evidence. is, I don't think that you can tell me I don't serve the Lord. But because Jesus is saying that. The Bible you tells you that, not me. The Bible says Jesus yes. But let me tell Jesus you said, you shall know them by their fruit. Yes, what are these what are these words do to you? These words of life and truth. You know, one of the you know, other than the flames of the hell and the worm that doesn't die, <clears throat> one of the torments in the lake of fire is going to be regret. Regret. Because you're gonna remember in that day, every time that God sent one of his preachers or you heard a word, maybe God whispered it into your heart. You're going to remember every time that the Lord reached out to you and offered you his salvation and instead chose sin and a good time and the next girl and the next high and the next alcohol, the next drunkenness, the next fight, the next pride. Folks, we're here today not to condemn you, but to open your eyes to the condemnation that is already upon you apart from Jesus Christ. We don't have the power to condemn, but God does. And one day, if you die in your sin, not having known Jesus Christ, not having repented and turned away from your sin unto the Lord by faith, by grace through faith, something that God commands you to do. If you die in your sinful state, like most of you are tonight, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> there's a real kingdom of God, and there's a real kingdom of darkness. There's a real lake of fire, and we're here to declare that to you tonight, the truth of that, so that hopefully the fear of God will come upon you. And will open your eyes to the fact that you need Jesus tonight. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why do you fear signs that say poison? Don't drink. You're not going to go home and drink a bottle of bleach, are you? You're not going to go home and grab a gun and pull the trigger and blow your head off. Because you want to live. You're not going to go and shoot somebody in front of that police officer tonight, are you? Why? Because you fear. You have fear in your heart to do these things. How much more the fear of God? As Jesus said, do not fear them that can kill the body and have nothing left to do, but I'll tell you who to fear. 
Fear him who has the power to throw the body into hell. You're going to die one day, and you're going to stand before the God of heaven and earth. And the Bible says only those that have repented of their sins and been born again of the Spirit of God through faith in Christ Jesus are going to enter into the kingdom of God. The rest, the Bible says the rest, God's going to send his angels to gather up the wicked. The angels are like God's police officers. The angels are like God's soldiers. And the angels of God are going to go and gather up all the wicked, all the people that rejected Jesus and chose to get high instead, all the people that hated God's word and rejected it or formed another God in their mind that's okay with your sin. All the people that love sex outside of marriage instead of Jesus, that love to get high, get drunk, smoke it up. All the tough guys that, that, that are tough in this life and want to beat people up and murder people. All these sinners, if you don't repent of your sin and be born again, the angels of God, God's police officers, are going to gather them up and cast them into the lake of fire. Jesus said, if you don't abide in me, and I in you, you'll wither as a branch. You'll wither as a branch, and the, bra the dead branches. I was out cutting, uh, cutting up my tree to make it look nicer the other day, and I put all the, all the branches that were uh, detached from the tree on the side of the street. And gradually, uh, when they first got cut off, they still had green leaves and nice fruit on them. But gradually, over the next two weeks, those branches became to get dried out. Brown leaves and dark leaves and the fruit started withering. And the garbage people come by and they gather those branches up and they throw them in the truck, grind them up, and some of it might go to the fire. And that's exactly a picture of what it's like to be outside of Jesus Christ. As Jesus said, I am the vine. I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman, or the caretaker. And ye are the branches. He's talking about those that are in Christ. And he commands them to abide in me, and I in you. You can do nothing of yourself. <clears throat> you see, you can't save yourself. Your lifestyle of sin, you don't even realize it. Even though it's giving you pleasure right now, even though you think it's cool to live this way, because your culture tells you this is what's cool, You've been brainwashed by your culture to tell you what to do and how to think and what's cool and what's not cool and how to dress and how to act. Your culture has taught you that. And you go right along with it. And you know, cultures and, and people groups have been created by God to worship Him in a diversity of worship in the same spirit of the Holy Spirit. But the devil has taken cultures and corrupted them cultural sins and cultural stereotypes all these things the devil has corrupted and you're brainwashed to follow the culture to hell you see you don't want to follow the culture to hell you want to follow Jesus to the kingdom of God if your mom if your dad if your friends if they're all leading you to sin then it's time to it's time to leave those friends and turn to Jesus even if your mom or dad are wicked, even if you don't have a mom and dad, there's a heavenly father that wants to be your father. Our father in heaven is a father to the fatherless through Jesus Christ. But you can't have a father without the son, Jesus Christ. And God commands all men everywhere to repent, to turn away from your sin. You think it... You, you think you got a lot of swagger now, you're, you think you're cool, you think you're tough, you're hanging out with your homeboys, it's now you're young, you think you've got the rest of your life to live, but guess what, you could die tonight, and then what you're going to do? Where's all the, where's all the pride going to be then? It's going to be gone, and you got to stand before God alone, and where is he going to send you? Is he going to say, come, my good and faithful servant, and enter the kingdom that's been prepared for you of my father? from the foundation of the world? Or is he going to say, depart from me? You that work iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, that should put the fear of God in your heart. That should put the fear of God in your heart to turn to Jesus. You see, God is for people not perishing. 
even though he's going to send them to hell, it's because they rejected him. God is giving you an opportunity through his word. Through his word. He's giving you opportunity. As it says in Romans, I think 10. It says in Romans 10. It says, how, the, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Who are they sent by? The Lord. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I bring you glad tidings of good things. What are you going to do with that? You see, God sends his preachers into the world to preach the gospel, which is the good news of the kingdom. Because he's showing mercy to you, even though you might hate God right now. Even though you might hate God right now in your life, you say, forget God, I'm going to live for myself. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. I'm going to have sex with who I want to have sex with. I'm going to smoke it up, drink it up, get high, have a good time because you only live once. Isn't that how you feel right now? You only live once. Let's have a good time. But guess what, man? Just because you go to church on Sunday doesn't make your sin go away. you got to turn to Jesus. And see, that, that's what we're here to do is to... Is to, is to preach the gospel to you in the hopes that you'll, your eyes will be open to the sin that's in your life right now. And that you would turn away from that sin and stop going the way of the devil. Stop going the way of the world. Stop going the way of the culture. Who cares where the culture is going? The cultures are going to hell in America because of the cultural sins in, in America. Sins of drunkenness, sins of uh, getting high, sins of abortion, and sins of homosexuality, and lying, and cheating, and fornication, and adultery. All these things are condemning the cultures in America. No. God wants you to turn to Him, and He'll make you a new man and a new woman, so that you won't dress like a prostitute anymore, and God will give you a husband. God will give you a husband that loves you, not just for your body, not just for your body, but for your heart that's been purified by Christ. You see? I know when I was in the world and I was messing around with women, women only dress like that to advertise what they got. So live it for Jesus. Don't live it for the world and die and go to hell. Live it for Jesus. One life to live, that's right, you got one life to live. And you're going to regret it if you die in this one life in your sin. You see? God didn't give you a body so you could advertise it to the world and say, I'm open for business. That's what businesses do. They show off their message. They show off their advertising. God gave you a body for your husband and for the Lord, for your wife and for the Lord. The Bible says that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You see? But what does the devil want you to do? The devil wants you to take off your clothes and be naked. Advertise your body. Have sex outside of marriage. No, folks, listen. You've got to get off that and turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. You're right. You've got one life to live. And this one life God has given you to live for Him. What are you doing with that? What are you doing with that one life? What are you doing with the sacrifice of Jesus? You're saying, man, forget God. I'm going to live how I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to live my life, get rich, and die trying. No, folks, that's the mantra of the world. God wants you to be saved. He wants you to live for Him. There's no riches in this world that's worth giving up your soul. As the Scripture says, as the Scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world 
but lose your soul. All these things you're chasing after in the world, what is it doing for you? Yeah, it makes your flesh feel good. You and your boys, your girls, your homeboys, your homegirls, you're having a good time every weekend, drinking it up, smoking it up, partying it up, having sex with women, women having sex with men, men and men, women and women, whatever. Smoking hot, getting high, acting tough, fighting. Some people are shooting. But guess what? What's it all worth? What's it getting you? Nowhere. It's leading you to hell. What does the music preach? What does your music preach? If you listen to hip hop music, I know I did. I was a hip hop artist. And hip hop is full, rap music is full of glorifying party lifestyle, glorifying violence, glorifying thug life, glorifying sex, glorifying drinking it up and smoking it up, glorifying, you know, all these kind of things. Death metal, death metal glorifies death, suicide. Violence, rage, anger. Country music glorifies fake goodness, false righteousness, drunkenness, gambling. All these different music genres the devil has corrupted and it feeds your mind and it forms you after its image and likeness. Your music, your movies, everything forms you after its image and likeness. But see, the Bible says to renew your mind. With the renewing of the mind, reading the Word of God, the Word of God renews your mind. And you start to think like Jesus Christ thinks. You start to live as Jesus Christ lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you can't have that. You can't have the power of the Holy Spirit unless you give up this world, give up this life. Repent of your sin. Turn away. A lot of people say they love God. A lot of people say they love God. A lot of people say they're a Christian. What does it say in John 14? John 14, verse 15. Let's see what it says for people that say they love God and that love Jesus. John 14. It says... If ye love me, keep my commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, in verse 21, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. So it's easy, it's easy for anybody to say, I love God, I love Jesus. I love God, I love Jesus. But yet when you say you love God and you love Jesus and you go and walk like a sinner, you don't really love God, do you? You don't love God. If I, if, I told, if I told my wife every day, if I told my wife every day, I love you, honey, I love you, you're so beautiful, honey, I love you, and then every day I go out and cheat on her, and I come home and I say, oh, forgive me, honey, I love you, and then go cheat on her again. Oh, forgive me, honey, I love you, and then go cheat on her again. That's pretty much showing you really don't love her. And so it's the same with fake Christians. It's the same with people who say they love God, but they don't follow him. If Jesus was in your heart, you wouldn't be a sinner. You wouldn't be walking in sin. But yet, you shall know them by their fruit, Jesus said. If you walk in sin, you're showing who your father is. You're of your father, the devil. Your father is the devil. Your God is the devil when you walk in sin. But if your God is Jesus, if your God is Jesus, you're not going to walk in sin. You're going to walk by the Spirit. As the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. What did Jesus say? Oh, yes, yeah, so says the person who says, I love God, and yet curses. You guys are the hypocrites. You see? Oh, is that how Christian women talk? Did I say I was a Christian person? No, I didn't. Is that how women who love God talk? Personally, I never said that I love God or that I was a Christian. So my, well, how about you? Well, maybe you should be. Maybe you should turn to Jesus and be saved. 
No, we're doing what Jesus told us to do. Oh, is that what Jesus said to go out and preach the gospel. Well, maybe That's what it says in the Bible. Maybe you should do it on a different corner. Because nope, you're we're going to do it right here because you're here. And you need to hear the me? truth. Me? Everybody, you're do here. you know me? I don't have to know you. You don't have to know me to nope. know that I love God? And you don't love God. Okay, heard. Since you know me so well. No, I know what's coming out of your mouth. Tell and me some more people about that myself. well, I'm just I'm just judging what came out of your mouth. Tell me some more about myself. I don't know you. I'm just judging what came out of your mouth. And people that love God don't talk like that. Well, people that love God don't sit on the fucking corner. Yes, we do. Jesus fucking... said preach the gospel, and that's what we're doing. Hold on just a second. Okay. Sir. Okay. We can talk, sir. I, I understand yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. But so, you don't have to. You, you're okay with talking to me. You, you, just, you don't have you to. As a police, I'm you know, you have a freedom of speech to talk to me. You, as a police, I understand how you can keep you are not supposed to be street, but you judging can people. Them off. Wait a minute. Where does it say that? Uh, and why are you judging me? Um, I'm not judging you, but I do I'm think that it's wrong that you're saying out here. Well, that's a judgment. That's a judgment. Okay, well then I am judging. You. Okay, good. So then you're a hypocrite because you have a problem with judging. Well, then can you come up here with No, no, I'm, I'm preaching right now. I want you to get on your GoPro. This is bullshit. I believe in God. I love God. Okay, if you love God, it says in the Bible that you would obey Him. Yes, but guess what? God died on the cross for my sins. Okay, okay, but, but, I'm sure you but, committed sins but listen, listen, listen. God, Jesus did die on a cross, but that doesn't mean you're forgiven. The Bible says that he never asked you to accept him either. He didn't ask me, but I love God. You, well, you would, if you love God, you would show it by your life. I do not. try. You, no, no, you have to die. You have to die. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. You don't know what I do on my daily life. I can tell what's coming out of your sorry, mouth. I'm sorry, but you stand out here holding the sign. Well, you're just convicted because you're on that side. I'm not. Hold on just a second. I don't know. Okay. This is almost Sir. harassment. Okay, like, y'all are coming up to my fine with what you're doing. I but a noise ordinance you permits you from using a mechanism. We, we have approval, actually, from the, what's her name? They don't give permits in the Grange. But we do have approval until 12 a.m. Is it 12 a.m.? The city manager. City manager. Okay, we got about 12 minutes. Do you have a signature? With her name on it? I mean, we got to have some kind of proof that you have approval. Yeah, we need a signature. Ma'am, we're talking to the police now. You don't have anything to do with that. Is she like the city manager? <laughs> She's not the city manager. You need to repent. You need to find Jesus. Well, obviously you're not living for him, ma'am. You need to turn to him. It's not helping you. He's going to cast you into the lake of fire, and he's going to say to you, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Depart from me. That's what it says in Matthew 7 for people like you. Thank you for judging us. We appreciate Jesus said to judge righteous judgment. We love that. We love that. Thank you. Turn to Jesus. We don't want you to die in your sin. No, you haven't, ma'am. Don't be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous, but he that committeth sin is of the devil. See, this is, the, this is what I mean right here. This is what false preachers have produced in America. People that believe they're Christians, believe they love God, but yet walk in their sin. This breaks my heart, and it breaks the heart of God and brings the wrath of God upon you. Okay. Yeah. So... You're fine being here. Okay. You just have to keep the volume down. Well, is there a decibel level that we're supposed to keep it at? Well, and people, do you have a decibel reader? Well, people two streets over can hear you in their locks. We'll turn it down a little bit, sir. We can yeah. turn it down a little bit. That, that's fine. Oh, no problem, sir. Y'all, y'all are fine being over here. Yes, sir. It's just. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate Thank it. For your service, sir. Thank you. So how how where do I put it at? Okay, I just I turned it down. Yeah. Okay. Good? Okay, good. Appreciate it. <laughs> She's a city manager. <laughs> that was funny, bro. Okay, so when it, when it comes to these people, we're not going to be able to approach it from our perspective of what does the book say, because they don't have anything. Yeah. Give me a sir. Ma'am. Thank you. What's up? These people need help, right? They don't need to be made to feel. You don't need to ostracize them. Very Who's easy. ostracizing them? Are you them? a Christian, sir? No, no. I try every day to be just like Jesus Christ, right? But what Christianity has done to that man? You guys need man? to be what? more like Jesus. To what man? 
We are you being like Jesus. This no, is what Jesus he did. Didn't, he didn't walk around and tell people they were doing wrong. He sat down with yeah, he them. Did. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yes, no, he, he did. Didn't. He didn't cast Can I show you? Can I show you? you can't. Would you like to? Eye, I, I read I that can. thing front to back. Okay, well, I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you I've, where I've Jesus did that. I've read every removed book from the Bible that you haven't yeah, read that you guys cast out. Well, obviously you didn't because I'm about to give you the word of God where Jesus did that. I can give you I can give you 15 words. Give me one. Where, where, where he does exactly? You know he does exactly the opposite. Okay, he doesn't. He does not go. Here, you want me to show you? John chapter eight. He said, "If you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father." What was the truth that he told them? He said, repent of your sins or perish. In fact, Jesus preached more on condemnation and hell than anybody in the Bible. And it was because of his great he, love. Who was he preaching to? To sinners. In fact, in John chapter 8, he's, I, I, he's not I, preaching I, to the I, Pharisees. I, I, he's preaching to Jews that said they believe in him in the second half okay, of John 8. Okay, okay, but we don't, we don't, we don't need to bring... Don't bring the Bible into no, this? No, we don't, we don't need to... These aren't those people. Says, well, okay. she just said she believes in Jesus or God. Sit down, buy her so. a fucking drink, dude. Well, why would I? Yeah, Look, no, nah, I'm done talking to you. Yeah, there's nothing else you can tell me. If you're not a Christian, if you don't, if what's coming out of your mouth, man? Listen, you need Jesus. You don't understand. You, no, you don't have really Jesus. Cool? Yeah, man. Listen, you listen. See something no, really, really no cool I don't right? want to see it. Look, really I don't want to see Jesus it. on my dashboard, bro. It doesn't matter. He's okay. not in your heart. He's not he's in walking my life with every, you. You want to see how much he's not walking with me? I took a picture of Jesus the other day. You know what it said on my radio that, that says Bluetooth radio, blah, blah, blah. It said, I said, Jesus, what am I supposed to do? What listen, am I supposed to Jesus do? Jesus said you, you shall know, know them Jesus by their said? fruit. What's the fruit of your life? That's that's what you need Helping to look at. People. That's the, fruit the fruit of your of life. life. Benefiting people. Holiness. Making people feel like shit. Holiness. Who have you helped? Holiness. Who have you helped? My words. It's, we're not going to boast in our it's, good works. It's, it's not. You're boasting in your good true. works right now, but we're not doing that. We're telling the truth, which is which foolishness is, to the world. We don't boast in good our goodness. Their bad, no, right? no. We're preaching the word of God. You. Not that you I'm are, so great. You are taking the seat of someone mighty. And telling these people we're preaching the you, word of that, God, that, and you're convicted you, because you're in sin. That, that that you have any? Are you a sinner? Here, let me tell you. Are you a sinner? Yes or no? Absolutely. We were okay. Just, we were just like so. Him, we were like you, you at one point. You are like me. No, we, we, we are not. You are like no, me no. because what you're doing is a sin. No, it's not. You who show gave, me one who scripture. Gave, who gave you? the right spiritual to judge man, anybody judges no that you're taking liberty you're taking way way things. too much liberty first with that. corinthians 2 15. that's right a spiritual man judges all things are we quoting are we quoting jesus or are we quoting the old testament there's no separating jesus from yes the Bible. there is, is jesus corinthians in the new testament old testament jesus, god? jesus through the old testament is jesus god no he did yes he is, is the bible god's word that's all his he's, word, he's, share, he's sharing with you a New Testament no, verse. No, the Bible is That's not, not even the Old Testament what the he's Bible, talking. The Bible, okay, look, anytime you say anything more than God, it's a bastardization of who that is, okay? Anytime you put a definition to that, you don't I know that. You yeah, don't I'm just going to keep preaching. That book, that book cannot. That but like book, I said, Jesus said repent or perish. You're the worst. Jesus said, repent or perish. This man's convicted. That was so judgmental of you to say that. This man's convicted of his sin. You're turn to Jesus, you're folks. Out here on a Jesus wants you to turn to him. Everybody out that walked by his grace. And you got the fucking nerve to call me judgmental. Yeah, you're hey, man, smug. you're judgmental. That's you're, pretty judgmental. You're, you're, you're all you smug. Okay. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. You got such bad energy. Turn to Jesus. Okay, no, we're not. Okay, you don't have to either. You don't have to burn in hell either, man. Turn to Jesus. Stop judging us. Turn to Jesus. Okay, stop judging us, hypocrite. Turn to Jesus. God wants to save your life, but you got to let go of your sin. You got to turn away from your sin and turn to Jesus. Too much bad energy from you. Turn to Jesus with all your heart. You see, he's angry because he's convicted in him is conviction of sin and instead of repentance and faith he gets mad at the preacher and mad at the word and that's what the pharisees did to stephan when he preached the word of god that's what they did to jesus that's what they did to many people throughout history 
people that were sawn asunder, persecuted, tormented, in prison, because they preach the Word of God, because it convicts the soul. It brings light to the darkness. And John chapter 3 men, says, men love darkness rather than light. That's the condemnation that has come, because light has come into the world, and instead of coming to the light, men love darkness rather than light. No, 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 don't tell us we're, sin, we're in sin. No, don't shine the light on my sinful ways. Tell me that God loves me and He accepts me as a sinner without repentance, without believing, without a life change. No, tell me that. No. No, folks. The wrath of God is upon you as an unbeliever. And God wants, God's love is calling you out from that wrath. But you got to give up your sin. You got to detest your sin that's keeping you under that wrath and, and leading you to the lake of fire. You got to turn from that sin. As Jesus said, repent. And that's not a works-based gospel. That is obedience to God. That's, that's ceasing from dead works. That's not doing anything as far as the law of Moses is concerned. That's ceasing from dead works, dying to yourself, and believing by faith through repentance and faith on the gospel of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and you shall be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, by His, by His power, and you working with the Holy Spirit, obeying Him by the Spirit, will keep you holy, and you will come into divine fellowship with God. And that's what God wants, His divine fellowship. He wants to offer you His friendship, His fellowship, with you so you can be in right relationship with God right now you don't know that there's no greater joy there's no high there's no drunkenness there's no sex there's no good time that can replace the joy of the Lord that can replace divine fellowship with our God who created us in our mother's womb there's nothing in this world that can come close and you don't have it that's why you're chasing after things to make yourself feel joy or happy or fun because you don't have the joy of the Lord. Because you don't have the fellowship with God. But God is offering you that through the cross. God in His great love wants to deliver you out from the wrath of God and give you that divine fellowship, make you clean, make you holy, and send you out into a world to tell them the truth about God's love. And that love is through Jesus Christ. Yes, He does love you in this, that He died for you on the cross that whomsoever would believe. You're not good without Jesus. There's no man good without Christ. Not one, not one righteous. You're not good without Him. Your life isn't good. Your, your death isn't going to be good without Christ. He wants to save you tonight. Who's going to hear the Word of God? We're not going to sugarcoat the Gospel. Sin is keeping you from Him. We're not going to sugarcoat that. Even though God's tender mercies are, are calling out to you, receive my mercy, says the Lord. Receive my mercy. Why would you have death rather than mercy, uh, rather than life? Why would you have wrath rather than mercy? Why would you have sin rather than Christ? Why? Why? What's it worth? Folks, you have an opportunity tonight to lay your life down for Jesus, to give up your lifestyle of sin, and repent and turn to Him with all your heart. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. You can't repent, sin, repent, sin, repent, sin. You're not really repentant. The Bible says godly sorrow. In, first, in Corinthians, godly sorrow leads to repentance unto salvation which shall not be repented of. Second Corinthians... Um, 7.10 For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. That's the repentance <coughs> God is talking about. Godly sorrow over sin, that your laughter would be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. That you would humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and be saved. Turn to Him and go home. <coughs> go home. Don't just go to church on Sunday and fake it. 
Go home and repent of your sins and turn to Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh. Someone warns you that the bridge is out, you're going to go off and you're going to go over a cliff. What do you got? You got to turn around. Or you could just keep going and it's not. You know what I mean? And you're tired, right? And so many people are going to die in their sins like that. They've been warned. Just kind of let Lord's them know. Them, but they, just, they don't the want to. They don't want to turn around. Think Kerrigan had that. They don't want to do it okay, because yeah, a, a lot of times, like, like, like when I was going that way, it was like everyone I knew was going that way too. Yeah. All my friends, everybody, we're all going the same direction, but we're all going to go off the cliff together. But then the Lord is like, "Come to me. Get off that way. Come to me. You know, come to me. I'll, I'll give you a brand new life that you don't know about." It's like it's like if somebody's blind. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if you were, imagine right. if you were blind, okay? If you were born blind, Amen. and you never saw color, you never saw the sky, you never, you never saw anything, right? You wouldn't know what anything looked like. Amen, man. You know, and Check that's that what out. it's like. It's right about now, Jesus, man. Right now, you need him in your life. Another life for you that you, you haven't experienced yet, but the Lord wants to offer you that, right? Brand new life that you don't know anything about. It's supernatural. And God will come and live inside you, and He'll open your eyes to see a whole new, whole new world. And He'll change all your desires. Like He'll give you a brand new Turn heart, to Jesus. And He'll give you His desires. Like all the desires that you wouldn't you be here. Like, like don't, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you for real. I'm going to tell you for real, okay? Okay, I want to have out a serious Out of love. Out of love, I'm going to tell you for real. Okay, out of love. Okay. I'm sorry, but I don't think what you're in, doing is out of love. The truth sound like hate to those that hate the truth. So in scripture, it talks about people just like you in Matthew 7. But I want to ask you something. No, no, hold Have on. Have you ever committed a sin? See, everybody's committed a sin in the past. And guess, and but the God Bible, says that each sin is equal. Listen, unless listen, you listen. He didn't revolt, say that. Unless you say that. That's your opinion. You You're going to keep talking, then, then we're done. I'm trying to show you what, what the scripture says, not what my opinion is or your opinion. Okay? The Bible says all have sinned past tense. The Bible does not say that all will continue to sin. Never. In fact, it tells you to go and sin no more. And no man can do that except for the power of Christ in us. But that's the very evidence that Christ is in us that we don't sin anymore. You see what I'm saying? Or if we do sin, if, because it's a possibility we could sin. It's not a definite. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Our spirit is convicted. It's not this thing where we say, you know, repent, convict, repent, go is this back working? and sit. Please don't is touch my on? camera. Respect yourself, okay? Is that on? No touching. Is it on? No touching. Is it of on? Of course it's on. Oh, so of course if you don't want to touch, maybe you should go home. But no, let's, no, let's no. Know what he's, let's just it's against the law to touch anybody. It's not against the law to talk. I didn't touch you, I touched your camera. Well, don't touch my property, okay? Can you do that? Can you handle that? I can handle that. Great. Okay, so so in Matthew 7, Jesus describes somebody just like you. He says, many in that day, on the judgment day, are going to come to me saying, Lord, 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 we prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did many wonderful works in your name. And it says in Matthew 7, Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So there's a lot of people that think they know Jesus and are going to stand before him and hear those words saying, depart from me. Okay. And what's, what's the key? You workers of iniquity, those that are in sin, those that are sinners. See, God wants to take you from being a sinner to a saint. That's it. That's that's the reason why he died. Not so you could keep sinning and oh well the blood of Jesus was shed for me so I can keep sinning and repent. No, that's not the gospel. And you know, I'm gonna say this. I'll live my life to serve the Lord as you, much as I possibly can. And yes, I am out drinking right now. You, see, and that shows that you don't really serve the Lord. I do, that's but the, the thing evidence. Is, I don't think that you can tell me I don't serve the Lord. But because Jesus is saying you, that. The Bible you tells you that, not me. The Bible, Jesus. Yes. But let me tell Jesus you said, "You shall know them by their fruit." A lot of people pretend to be Christian, and, I and they're think hypocrites. That so I like, think that God knows us store, for what's in our heart, you're, you're, you're and 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 what's in your and heart comes out in your life. Heart, it does. But let and me Jesus you said that. We are living in a very, very awful you, world today. To today. To Last that week, doesn't matter. Eighteen children were doesn't shot matter. in a classroom. Where was God then? Doesn't matter Where right there. God? Well, guess what? Those children, if they knew Jesus, death isn't the worst thing that could happen. And you know what? I Just so you know. 
believe that the end times are coming. And I do. Well, that should put the fear of God in your heart. It does put to the get fear right of God with in my heart. And I have, I do try to get right with God. No, you don't. Because but you don't know you've me. You've got to, well, but I see what's coming. The only Are you a person? sinner? Are you a sinner? I am a sinner. Okay, well, then but that God means you're not a saint. But God says that everybody in this world sins. No, he doesn't say I'm that. I'm sure you have sinned. You thought a thought. Okay, hold you on. You have even thought a thought. Nope, that, is That's, not that could be a temptation, not a sin. It's a sin. No. Then Jesus was a sinner because he was tempted in the wilderness, and the thought came to him to turn that rock into bread. Does that make him a sinner? Yes or no? Did he do it? Of course not. But it was a thought. Having an evil thought doesn't necessarily mean it's a sin. But I'm sorry, but it's a temptation. I will, I will. I'm not even trying to argue with you. And at this point, like, I have got a little heated because I am sorry. Nobody's going to stand in front of me and tell me that I do not. There's that. That's for Christians that call themselves Christians. The Bible tells you that. Read Jesus' I'm sorry, words. But who is the one person in this? Who is the one person that can judge me? And he will judge you. It's God. He will but judge look you. Who is standing here before me judging me? Not God. But the you Bible. You are God. The, and guess and what? You're going to stand not before him. It's my job to stand here on the street and judge people. It's my. Because I'm it's my job to doing, tell them of the judgment that's what coming. You're, doing you're just convicted. Pushing people away no, what, from God. what you're doing is that. It's not. Who, because who, I preach. Let, God let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Hey, everybody. Look at me. I'm a sinner like you, but I love God. Come be like me. That's your message. Y'all go to church. That's your message. Y'all go to church. That's your message. You do, you love your God. message is, hey, we can all sin. You think they're standing out here with a sign saying, <laughs> warning, drunkards, you know, homosexuals, liars, all this stuff. You're damned to hell. Do you think that God would want them out here on the street saying that? It doesn't matter what no. people think. Right? It matters what God thinks. But guess what? You, you don't care people, what God thinks. You're a person, and you don't you're care what God that thinks. This is okay. You're lost. I'm not lost. You're completely deceived by yes. the devil. Do you want me to tell you something? Completely yes, I deceived. may be lost. But guess what? I personally grew up in a rough fucking life. Okay. I went so through you can, a lot. It doesn't matter. You can be free. You can be healed. That's not yes. gonna last. That's not gonna last on Judgment Day when you stand it's before God and He says, "Hey, day. this man came out to tell you the truth, and you rejected the word." God's word, the Bible. I'm not rejecting your word. I'm sitting here listening. No, not my I word. God's word. With you're disagreeing with the Bible. I just gave you the Bible. I want you to show me in the okay. Bible where it says that it's okay for y'all to stand out here and judge people. Okay. Show me the verse where. It's All right, you know what? Let me pull it up on my phone since it's dark. I want you to pull up the verse where it says that it's okay for you to stand out here and judge people. I'm going to show you where it's not. That you're not God. You are not God. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Well, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to this. Um, so, hey, you know what? Yep, I'm going there. But I'm going to go to this other one first. First Corinthians 2.15. The more judgment for you. First Corinthians 2.15. It says... <laughs> but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. That's you. You're a natural person. You're not receiving the things of the are Spirit. Are you a natural person? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Is judged of no man. Okay, look. He judges all things. Spiritual man. Okay, I'll give you another one. Jesus said, John, what was that, bro? John 14? John 7, 20. John 7. Come on, phone. There it is. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That's Jesus' words. Now, when Jesus speaks against judgment, he's talking about hypocritical judgment and people like the Catholics who would condemn people to hell. When we're out here preaching, we're not condemning people. No, 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 hold on. What does we're, your sign say? What is a sign? Okay, so if you see a you sign, are listen, something and you're holding a sign listen, up that says, Damn, ear, two something, ears, something one mouth. Two ears, one mouth. But the thing is, is you so, got two ears and one mouth and you're listen, not Listen, because you're not saying anything true. When you're driving on a road and you see a sign that says, hey, the bridge is out, don't drive anymore. If you disobey that sign and you keep driving, you're going to fall right off a bridge. Are you going to say, hey, man, that sign is judging me. Why can't it tell me to drive on this bridge? I don't like that sign. That's what that is. That's a road sign in the, in the spiritual life. But you said that you weren't out here telling people they're going to hell. 
You literally told I said, me if, that I was going to burn in the lake of fire. If you keep That's in your I'm sin. E okay. A lot of people were offended at the preaching of the gospel. That's I'm not why, offended at the preaching of God. Sure. Well, yes, you I are, because that, that involves. God is a loving God. Okay, and and He's going to send think sinners that to hell. In my heart. He's sending sinners to hell. Is that very loving? Do you get a lot? You I think God like loves you? everybody? No, I do not think that God loves everybody. Okay, then. So some people God hates, because He's going to throw some people into the lake of fire, because they rejected Him. And but they I died in their not, sin. I'm not rejecting God. You do by your works, by what you do in your life. You're rejecting it. You Let me ask you a question. If I told my wife every day I loved her, I went out and cheated on her every day, would that show that I love her? No. Okay, that's what you're doing to God. You're saying, oh, I love God. I, I love Jesus, but yet you're getting drunk. You're out here with the world, hanging out with the world, doing the things the world does, and acting like you're a Christian. That's what drives people away from Jesus. Hypocrites that well, call themselves like what Christians. People, what, what drives people away the from truth? Christians? No, the truth? The truth? I'm telling them the truth. Here with Hold on one second. Hey, brother, I had to come get this speaker. Are you with Jesus? No, I was having this. Are y'all Jesus? Look, I look. I was right. My my dad was a preacher. Okay. And if y'all are Jesus. Well, then I am. If you're, didn't he tell you the truth that you can't be a sinner and a saint at the same I don't time? Think, you know what? I was raised in church, and I don't think y'all sitting here judging people. That are you judging our preaching. judging? What the fuck? Y'all are literally sitting here judging are, people. Are you are you judging our no, judging? I think you look stupid though. Honestly. Well, that's a judgment. So you're a hypocrite. But you're no, judging. I'm no. You're a hypocrite because you're sitting here judging people but, drinking. But you think judging is wrong. What do you do? I bet you cheat on your wife, don't you? No. <laughs> you probably do. I love my wife. 16 years. Yeah, you years. probably cheat on your wife. Your nope. wife is boring. No. Nope. And you probably have missionary sex. No. Nope. I can't help that. That's not my problem. That's not my fault that y'all have wire. missionary sex. Yeah, I know. You know. That's how the world thinks, though, because she yeah, has a filthy that's mind. That's how the world... Yeah, I have perverted. a filthy mind. I have a perverted mind. Perverted. I do actually have a perverted mind. Yeah, well, actually, God can clean you. Actually, I was raised in the church, so. Didn't you know, do you no good. This girl had to wear a skirt. Didn't so do you it, no good. It didn't do me no good. You know what it didn't do? You no good, motherfucker. It nope. didn't do you no good judging people that was sitting well, out here and you're What's screaming. wrong with judging? I was literally over there and I heard you screaming to people. Well, I'm not God screaming. God did not tell you to. God did not put you you're, on the earth. So, so who? Screaming. So you know what it I'm says in Psalm I'm one. Drunk. That's besides the point. Well, you sh you're oh, going to go to hell. We're drunk. You're thinking, is it I'm worth going, going to hell? You're telling me I'm going to hell. No, the Bible hell? tells you that. Bible tells. Oh my you. God, the Bible. The Bible can go to hell, and so can you. Now you. I don't no. give a fuck. <laughs> you will. You will when you stand before and, Jesus. In fact, I'm Muslim. So that's not going to help you either. Oh well. Oh well. So you're the only person that. That knows the truth, right? No, the Bible is the truth. You can't even Jesus argue is with the ignorant truth. fucks like this. My mom, I wish I could bring my mom. My mom All you're doing is talking, you're my not listening. My mom literally wears skirts down to here, and she is like the holiest person ever, and she would still say that you're a fucking stupid. She I don't think fucking. she'd say that. She wouldn't say fucking, you're right. She wouldn't. I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase this. And she honestly, I don't care what people say. I care what the Bible says and what God yeah, says. Th okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have came until now. But do you really well, think that sitting here screaming at people, you're going to get them I'm not somewhere? screaming. And that's what we love. You're the only one raising your voice right now. But I'm saying, oh, why would I don't think that this yeah. Listen, you can, you can, you can God, think what you want, and you can get all. But I think that you should be spreading love. Still talking. This is, this is, the, problem. This is the problem with women that can't be quiet. Women? Yep. Women? You don't believe yeah. in abortion. They Loud women. You don't believe in abortion. Oh, you're a murderer, thing. too. Oh, you believe God, in rape is okay? Why would I think rape is okay? So, oh, if God, a woman goes out and gets that's raped it. and gets pregnant by somebody who's so, having abortion. So, what did the baby do? Who gives a fuck? So you want is, a woman to have God, an abortion? That's God wicked. You're a murderer. Oh, my God, I'm a murderer. What's that? What's God doing for all the born people already? What about them? What about all the kids in foster care that have no support? What are they doing for them? What do you mean? What is God doing for them? He's helping them. Because the state you, doesn't allow that. Are you God? Do you see all the foster children? I am not, are but are God? you? Okay. No. Why are you, so are why you, you asking me if I'm God? Foster children, all the kids that you are you're, you're, That's a dumb question. Let's get no, back to our conversation. That's a legitimate that's question. Let's get back to our conversation. I think that this, <laughs> this is what happens when you become a loud woman. You just keep talking and talking and talking wow, and you never listen. And never so listen. You're a loud man. More false accusations. Life. You're talking oh, too much. She's the, actually, she's, see, look, see, see, look, look at the Jezebel right here. She, she wants to control you. Look at her. Look how controlling she is. She's trying to pull you away from a conversation. Well, you can walk away. She's been really nice. 
I think that's okay. God is going to be okay. We're not talking. I'm talking to her. We're not talking to her. See you, brother. You leaving? Oh, I got your stuff right here. Okay, I'm hanging here for a sec. Okay. Yeah, hang on. Judgment day is God's going to be okay with I'm talking to her. Because, no, you're talking to me now. No, I'm actually talking to her. Last time I checked, God has to judge y'all, too, right? Well, the Lord's going to judge us all, that's for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, and I agree with that. Plan is down. Lord, I do. You look and you know, I'm going to be honest. Okay, about what makes so. Better than what I, we're doing. Doing. I do think. Now, she's talking to him. We can talk. I do think that God, God would want people out here you. pulling you. people to so him. Like pulling people to God, I feel like he would want So how do you do that? I feel like spreading love. What is the Bible? Okay, what is the Bible's definition of spreading love? I feel like you should be out here. How do you... Hard. Yep. I I've had a lot of trials. I feel, I've had a lot of trials. I've so gone through okay. some really evil Everybody has trials. I've gone, and that may be while I'm out here. Both them folks, but let me that shit. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us go
You think that it's impossible to stop sinning. And I'm trying to tell you what the I Bible says. I live my life. And yes, I do proud Because to you're doing it in your own strength. You cannot overcome sin in your own strength. You cannot do it. That's why you have to repent and turn to Jesus and believe that he has the power. He, do you still want to sin? No. No. I don't want to sin. Okay. So, so now. What kind of world are we living in? It's impossible to sin. Jesus said to be in the world, but not of the world. So we, exactly. Jesus also said what's impossible. Possible a man is possible with God. How is it God. possible? I'm sinning when I go to work every day. No, you're not. Because God says that a woman is to work, is to be there for her man and work for her man. It is. God says. Have you ever read Proverbs 31? Proverbs 31 shows a woman in different seasons working, taking care of the home. It just depends on what season you're in, what God would have you to do. It's not a sin for a woman to work. But God says what? A woman was put here to serve. No, that's not what her it says. Oh, it does say wives submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Not to a sinner, like like somebody that's leading you into sin, but, but as you were unto saying, the Lord. You were saying, you were saying, but let's get back. Let's get back. Let's get back to you. No, but we're having a really good conversation. Can I say something to you? Can I say something to you? Yes. You know that the Lord is in your heart? Yes. Yep. The Listen Lord to is, the devil. The Listen Lord to the is devil. In his heart. You know where you're going. With I know this, but I'm having a good conversation with yeah. him because I don't listen earlier, to anybody tell. If, I heard if you you're walking in say, sin, don't let don't let anybody tell you that the Lord is I heard in your you heart. Earlier say, because that's the a devil. A woman is out here screaming, and then you tell me. That yeah, the Bible when talks say, about a loud mouth when I woman. Say, a woman in the Bible, it says a woman was meant to serve her husband. I, but I have no choice but to go out here every single day and make it as an independent woman because that is the world. Are you married? That is made. No, I'm not so married. So then that doesn't apply to you right now. If you're a single woman, you're supposed to give yourself to Jesus. And that, the Bible does say a meek and can, quiet spirit is of great value to the Lord. So a woman who's loud and loud and boisterous. If you're confident in the Lord being in your heart, ma'am, you're confident ma'am, in the you Lord see? being in your heart. Please don't That's make what me I'm right about. now. I'm just trying to deaden the whole is, conversation. You're confident. You see, you see how many times the devil has tried to interrupt our conversation? Is, because God wants to witness to you. you and this is this is how many times these women have interrupted us. You see? I've been called better by worse. I worse. Pay attention. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. You see? Pay attention. God wants to reach you. It's a spiritual battle right now. I'm not talking to y'all. God wants me to talk to her, not y'all. If you're confident, he's confident. Is she awakened? No. Not everybody. No. No. But Andrew came y'all here to get me. I really no. was no. having. No, Andrew like. Why do you keep? I really was having a good conversation. That is what, why. What is um like a female and a male have to I'm do? I'm not talking to you right absolutely now. Absolutely fine. No, but what I'm saying is, if two confident people to judge anyone else who are confident, then two confident people. She doesn't know the Bible. Both of their fucking sins. Yeah, she doesn't know the Bible. It's fine. Both of their fucking heart. I promise you. 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 God's calling because you out of your you sin. Can, you can be it's a free gift. In God and, have and he'll heal your heart too. And he'll give you the joy of the Lord. He'll make you a new woman. Points. Or you can be like them. And I did that. And I don't that's all I was God, telling so you. So I'm not a part of this exactly. conversation. I've exactly. been through so I'm the devil, right? Nope. That made me nope. hate what am I then? You're a woman. And doubt God. Ah! But I know. If I don't believe in God, he, I said, am I the devil then? He said, no, you're a woman. He does nope. not. She just like twisted women. my words. You just said. I said if I she don't. She just twisted my God, words. You see how the devil works. Am I the devil? And he said, No, you're not the devil. I said, Then what am I? And he said, You're a woman. Let me tell you. Something. So he's talking down so, to me because how he just. Oh really? When I have a wife and three daughters, I, I disrespect you women. Still look down on women and have a wife. That's, that's your false accusation. I'm not talking to you. You're full of false accusations. I was brought up. A drunk. What do you do in your life besides none of your business? Your religion. None of your business. What do you do? Besides None of your business. Do, are you like in a congregation for 20 plus years? There we go. You can listen to her or you can listen to the Bible. I'll be over here if you want to talk. I have the Bible in my hand. But you're not the Bible. Did you see this, bro? Spiritual warfare, bro. You see that? From the, pre from the no, preaching. I'm just listening. I have self-control now. Yeah, don't listen to her. She's trying to provoke. She's trying to provoke. Okay, but if you're a preacher and a drunk walks through your door, do you kick him out or do you love him? We're not here to be held accountable to you. I'm trying to talk to this young lady. But that's but I, but I'm it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I'm just trying to go and live what I was no, it's not what, because God don't have See irrelevance, that? though. Dude. He really See, doesn't. What's you your question? Welcome 
That's kind of oh, what I was going with. Okay. Well, what about you, personally? Forget about all this stuff. God is trying to reach you. If you love God, you obey him. I just, I just don't agree with you yelling I spend about I'm not 30 minutes talking but you got to yell at me. Okay, but see, here's the thing. No, you don't have to I can say I love my wife and cheat on her every day. And my, my, my words don't mean anything. I'm going to be honest with you. I do live my life on a daily basis. According to who? You? According to what God says. No. No, I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm talking about your life. My life. If you're walking in sin, you're not loving Jesus. The thing is, Are you living holy? Like, yes, what I'm out here doing but right does now, anybody live holy? Yes, God's people live holy. So the Bible actually says without holiness, no man can do it. On a day-to-day -day basis, trying to serve the Lord. Because, okay. like I said, I'm, I've recently came to God, and it took me literally. You might be being drawn. Okay, you might be being drawn to Jesus, but you haven't surrendered yourself completely to the Lord because you're still out here. And God, that's that's why I believe God wanted me to talk to you. Okay, you're being drawn to the preaching. There's something going on in your spirit. I know it. Okay, but you've got to surrender. You gotta but, open but, the Bible. But, uh, you see what I'm saying? I know it's impossible. It's impossible for a man, but it's possible with God. It's impossible, especially. You just have to stop trying and just die and say yes, Lord. But the thing is, okay. is we're always far from How do you I mean, go about do not, not committing with that, people? You see, there's the, there's the spiritual warfare again I'm right there. I'm not arguing there. with him. I'm telling him. So how do you go it's, on it's a, a spiritual battle, battle with this young lady, man? God's trying to draw her, and these I women keep interrupting me. I got a preacher you can fucking listen to, yeah. and then make you like, call names on people. That's not... Love Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Like Father, I just you're pray God. that you would bring power to this world, right to this young lady's heart. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus right now. In Jesus' name. All these people out here. So this is, can I have a conversation with you? No, I'm not talking. Why not? Because God only talks to these people. We only talk to that part. But if you feel me, you fucking feel me. That's the exact same thing. Because I'm talking to these people. You fucking feel me. That's exactly how y'all make people feel. I don't give a fuck about it. Saying that they're going to hell. Y'all are a fucking shame. One second. Well, and I do exactly what you are. You we don't want any. We don't want anyone to go to hell. I know you don't want nobody to go to hell, but I feel like. Well, he's actually talking. Y'all should be trying to bring people to God by preaching the truth. Feel, how many people have came up to y'all? Out of all these people on the street, okay. the that's on the street right now. There's probably. How many people have came to you and said, this sign made me want to turn to the Lord and believe in God and be with God? How many people have came up to y'all and said that? That's what I'm getting emotional. You'd be surprised. That's what I'm getting emotional. Because I feel because like we, more people it, out here. I'm not, I'm not going to boast in who comes like to the Lord and who doesn't. But it's irrelevant right now for you. God's trying to speak to your heart, and you keep bringing all these hypotheticals in. When the Lord is trying to deliver you, and the Lord wants to reveal truth to you, they do. They do. They do. But that's not you right now. What about you right now? Just you. Yes, I need the Lord. I feel like everybody needs the Lord. Okay. So, so forget about them for now. And just focus on what God wants to do for you tonight. I feel like maybe God brought me to y'all to maybe say, why? Let me ask you a question. Yes, I feel like we maybe should learn something from each other. No, let me ask you a question. Not just me from you. Let me ask you a question. Which one of these two people is a hypocrite, right? I love you, Jesus, but yet every day they walk in sin. Or the one that... I love you, Jesus, and every day they're submitted to God, walking in holiness. Which one is the hypocrite? The one that doesn't. That's right. Right. But but you can be the one that does, because there was a parable that Jesus said about two people that he called to come and do his will. One said, no, I'm not going, but yet later he, he, he did. And then one said, yes, I'm going to do your will, and he didn't do his will. You can be the one that said, no, I'm not doing it right now, Lord. I'm not following your will, but yet later did his will. And That's what God's calling you to. You can be free from sin. Like you understand? Would, I'm telling you, you can be, be free from sin. I good, would love to be good. Free from good. Sin. That's a good desire. But I want but y'all to you know, forget like about bring that. more people. Yes. You are here now. We brought you right here now. God is drawing you now. You are evidence of the power of the of the word of God. Because of how angry I got. 
And that's 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 how a lot of people yeah, sometimes come that up. y'all were holding. I mean, I'm sorry, but I just don't think it's right because I think that God is a loving God. And and He is a loving God, but you don't know His love yet. I feel like it's hate. Now What's hate? Side. Okay, look at it from God's perspective. Hold on, hold on. Look at your side. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to give you the analogy again. literally pull your side out and look at it. I'm going to give you an analogy again. I'm going to give you an analogy again. If there was a pit right there and nobody could see it, and I had a sign that said, hey, stop driving, there's a pit here. You already told me this Is that sign situation. hateful? Yes or no? No, it's not. You're no, it's not a hateful sign. So, so spiritually, you can't see right now. And so that sign seems hateful to you, but really it's like that road sign, like, hey, there's a pit ahead of you, and this is what's keep this is what's gonna bring you into the pit. It's a warning. It's a warning. It warning. It seems hateful to me. It's because I think and I know that the Lord would want you to be drawing people to to come into his heart. I would I feel like he would and how does that be drawing happen? people to put him in his heart, but I don't. I feel like this would pit more people against him than it would for him. Well, Jesus said. Jesus said this. He said, "Only few." He said, "Narrow is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and few find it." So everybody's not going to go to the narrow way, but that doesn't mean we should water down the truth to bring more people in, because that's what most preachers in America do. They give you an ear-tickling message so that a lot of people can get saved, but yet they really aren't saved. We preach the truth. That's what well, Jesus that's said. Terrible. Yes, that sign that's looks that's hateful that's to you now because maybe you might be on that sign. And a lot of people get mad. And I personally, I mean, you know, yes, I will And God say wants I to take you off that sign. I have been drinking tonight. Okay. There are many sins that I have and committed, but... What does the Bible say about drinking? Quoted exact. Drunkenness. All drunkards will have their part in the lake of fire. Drink not into drunkenness is exact words. Okay, but strong drink, too. Strong drink, though. Strong drink is not wine. Let's, yeah. let's well, the thing is, beer, back liquor. No, no, no. Okay, you not even close. Anyway, go ahead. But, but that is uh, the reason uh, I'm uh, upset uh, because uh, I uh, feel like, you know, people may not be as open minded as me and willing to have a discussion as me because I'm really the only one out here. She may be having a discussion, but I'm really the only one out here having a discussion with you. So well, listen. And I haven't had it. And I maybe seen this. Anybody else. And you know what? I will tell you what. You weren't even out here two weeks ago. Hold on, hold on. You weren't out here two weeks ago when we had 15, 16 conversations. Okay, then. So don't judge it based on one night. I know. So you're judging me based off one night you meet me. No, I'm just saying, don't judge it. I'm judging based on what's coming out of your mouth. You said you're a sinner. I am a sinner. Okay, so 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 you can. You're so worried about what I say and not about what God says. You need to worry about what God says about you. Okay? I want you to understand. God wants to make you a I know, but I want us to get on. I want us. We're never going to agree. And we're never going to agree. But you said. Do you want to be free from sin? Yes or no? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you believe that through Christ Jesus you can stop sinning? Yes. Okay. So, now. All you got to do now is to go home, humble yourself before the Lord, repent. Not, not, I'm not talking about, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm talking about, Lord, I hate this. I don't want to be this way anymore. I believe that you have the power to overcome. And then what do you do after that? You cut off everything in your life that leads you to sin. Friends, um, influences, everything. The Bible says evil company corrupts good habits. And this is why I got so offended. Because I don't come out here barely ever. This is the first night well, I'm I came glad you out came out here because you met us. Long time. You met us. God but wants I to do heal feel you. I'm offended because you said you live your life in sin, and I really do try to live my life every single day. I literally wake up in the morning, I go to work, I go home, I cook dinner, I, I lay you. in bed, speak to the Lord, go to sleep. I hear you. But guess but what? Guess what? You You're need to be. You would need to be born again. You need to be born again of the Spirit. God wants to heal your heart. Whatever your childhood, you had an abusive home. God is a father. He's the one that heals the broken heart. He can heal your broken heart. And then, guess what? God could give you a family in Him where they won't be abusive to you. And then a generation will come out of you that is holy. But how am I supposed to? I 
would that. love for that to happen. You have to but how in this fucking world are you supposed to be able to raise a family? That's right. I, I, I've got four children, and they love Jesus. I'm sure they do, but... They love Jesus. Wait, how old and I'm in this world with you. Let me ask them, how old are they? One's about to be 15. My twin girl, she's a girl. My twin girls are 12, about to be 13. I just had a, boy, a son. He's five months. Do you homeschool? Yep. They weren't always homeschooled, though. They weren't always homeschooled. Because I'm telling you... They were in public school before. It is not... And I was in public school. It is not... Uh, it's not easy being... If you want to live in today's world, and I know it's not easy... My children were going to public school sharing Jesus when they were in public school. They were younger. And they got rid... The one of them was in middle school. Get, one of them was in middle school. The older you get... And she got torment. She got bullied. She got made fun of for, oh, for many things. I bullied out of school okay. so bad I had to literally swap counties. I hear you. And except for the Lord, you know, part of the reason why it has been hard for me to find my path to the Lord. We will never be as bad. Because of stuff like that. And I know, I know now, because I know now that God, like I said before, He puts us through these trials and tribulations to mold us and teach us lessons for what who we are and who we need to be he i feel like he does i feel like he does put you through trials and tribulations well, he allows it or he actually does it but but more so for his children like people in the world a lot of times it's as a result of their sin okay and sometimes god allows it to bring them to him because they won't listen okay i've had i've had trials in my life that were a result of sin that i committed and it actually woke me up and put the fear of God in my heart, right? And you know, a lot of the bad, I mean, not a lot, because a lot of the stuff that happened to me was a result of other people's sin. Right, it's not God's fault. But that's why I say... But you can be a witness and I do want to be for witness. women like that or, or for men like that that came out of broken homes, but you got to, it starts with you surrendering everything to Jesus. And I, I understand that. Everything I understand to the Lord. That. But I do want you to listen to, I do want you to try to listen to what I got to say as well. I have been. And that's why I say it's like, you agree with me, people are put through these trials and tribulations and it more than likely led them astray from the Lord. It could. It just depends. And I've had some things that could have led me astray from the Lord because of the grief mm -hmm. and the pain. And but that drew me closer to the Lord. But your trials I was a and tribulations are not the same as others. Of course not. I'm, I'm not sitting here comparing myself. And I know you're not. Yeah. But I'm just saying, there's people that have gone through some really horrible stuff. Of course. A lot worse than me. And I feel and you. a lot. And exactly. Worse yeah. than me. I mean, I could have gone through a lot worse than what I've gone through. But I feel like you should be pulling people from this straight path. That's what we're doing. But I feel like it's very offensive. And you I keep know saying, I feel like. But it is offensive because it cuts against the sin in your life. Anybody that loves sin, they're going to get offended at this message. I mean, they killed Jesus. They killed Stephen. They and killed 11 of the apostles sin, died. But I love, I love people. Okay, so you, so you I, hate your sin. The only answer is to turn to Jesus with all your heart and give him your life and he'll deliver that sin out of you. I had demons cast out of me, like literal spiritual entities cast out of me. And maybe that's what I need. Well, I'm not saying you need that. I'm not but saying maybe you're... that's what I need. No, 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 don't, don't think that unless God shows you that. You're not, I, don't, I don't think you're demon possessed. Okay, I think I think you just need to surrender yourself to the Lord and fully repent and believe. I have literally tried. I you don't try anymore. You die to yourself. You literally die. You come. Sorry. You come to the Lord like a little child, and you just come to Him and you say, "Lord, I can't do this. I, have. I can't be free I have from sin." Thanks God. And He'll do it. You got to believe Him, though. You got to believe Him. And I have, and that's why. Without I doubting. I believe. Without doubt. That's why I don't doubt God. Okay. So you can't doubt. I you got to come to believe what the Do you have a Bible? I'm about to tell you. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm about to tell you. This is what made me believe in the Lord. I was very depressed. Take that. That's just I was scriptures. On the verge of suicide. Uh huh. And. I had a conversation with somebody, and we started talking about reading the Bible. Yeah. And I told him, 
I was not raised in the church. I really don't know anything about God. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why I doubted God, but I, that's why I resonate with people that don't know God, that haven't been taught God, because how are they supposed to be led to the path if they don't know Him? Right. And we're talking about it. We're talking about reading the Bible. He said, if you read the Bible, you will understand Him. And when I left from talking to this person, it started pouring down rain. It was sunshine outside. It started yep. pouring down rain. And it rained so hard that the rain was up to the middle of my tire. Mm -hmm. And I was in my room and I thought to myself, let me take my Bible out and put it on my desk where it's out where I can see it, where I have to, where I have to look at it. I pick it up and read it. And as soon as my hand touched the Bible, it stopped raining and the sun came out. And that's why I believe in God. And that's why I believe that God would want you out here trying to draw people to him. Well, well if you open that Bible, this is how you learn and by the Spirit of God, how you witness and preach. So there's, like I said, there's many... And maybe we see things differently. But I don't well, and maybe I, I it see is things... because I'm a woman and because you're a man. Well, I don't... I, I, like I said, Like though. I said, you can share the gospel many different ways. Because I feel like... Okay, some gospel. people respond... Here, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example here in Jude, or in James. In, uh, no, it's Jude, actually. Look at this. This is in the scripture. This came... It says... And of some have compassion, making a difference, right? Soft, gentle, like you're talking about, right? Leading them in love and whatever, you know. But it's no, no less love what preaching is. And then it says, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So there's a place for preaching the fear of God. And there's a place... For leading someone in compassion. Now look what Jesus did to and the. I can't with you on that look what Jesus did to the adulterous woman. He didn't say you need to repent. You're gonna go to hell. Blah blah blah. No, he said, where are your condemners? You know, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. That's what he told her. Go and sin no more. She was already in a repentant place. Same with the Philippian jailer when he came before Paul after that earthquake. He's like, what do I do to be saved? He's broken. They didn't say rep they didn't say you're gonna go to hell. But there were other places where they were hard preaching like Jesus in John chapter 8 he was speaking to the believing Jews he said look you're of your father the devil and of your father's works you will do he had a harder word for them and these weren't just the Pharisees these were people that believed in him that were Jews and and, and they walked in their sins and so and Stephen rebuking you know the, the religious leaders I mean there's there's different ways that Jesus addressed different hearts and and neither one is wrong it's just you know, when we're preaching, we're casting a net. When we're talking one-on-one, -on -one, now we're dealing with a heart. So, like, I'm going to change the way I talk to you because the way your heart is. You see what I'm saying? When I'm preaching, everybody gets drawn in. You were drawn in by the preaching, whether you know it or not. God, God, was, God was using the preaching. You were offended. I was offended. Yeah, and so that's what the preaching does sometimes. And, you know, I've never seen that verse in the Bible. What's in Jude? Yeah. I've never seen that verse in the Bible. Yeah. And so, yes, I guess it, it says in the Bible. Right there, I don't guess. I know it says in the Bible. Well, yeah. This is a way of preaching. And you may be, I mean, you are right. It did draw me in, and it brought me to this conversation. And like I said, that's where we disagree. I come from compassion. <laughs> You come out of the, well. Out of I mean, I still have compassion on people. I, don't get me wrong. I mean, I wouldn't come out here to preach in the street, sacrificing time with my wife and children, and whatnot, just because I want to condemn people. That'd be foolish. I mean, we've driven miles. We spent. We don't come out here. We don't get paid to do this. You know, I. You know, I. I don't. I don't get paid to do any of this. This is all out of compassion and love for the lost. You know, I don't think I'm better than somebody else at all. You know, so. So, well, that's why I was talking to you. What's your name? Ellie. Ellie? Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that scripture booklet I gave you, mm -hmm. it gives you step-by-step -step things mm -hmm. about, you know, different topics that'll, that'll help you, okay? okay. And I'm, Ellie? Yes. I'm going to put you in my prayer list, okay? Thank you. And but I do want you to maybe take heed of what I said. Maybe just bring a little bit of compassion into what y'all are doing. Because... So that's for you. Oh, is that the princess one? The yeah, there we go. Right there. That's uh, a lot of compassion. Done. That's what I need. Believe me. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants you to be his princess. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, so, will you read it? Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you all. Take care. Bless you. Y'all have a good night. You too, Ellie. Ellie? All right, Ellie. Mm -hmm. My Ellie may find it. All right. 
Salvation. I want one. <laughs> I just noticed it. I want one. Yeah. How do you get one of those? Well, he actually blessed him with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that from Joshua Aaron's Joshua site? Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Joshua you Aaron. One. You want one? <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a brother in Israel that we know. Ooh. And uh, his Ooh. name is Joshua Aaron. I hope nobody has ep yeah, epilepsy, yeah, man. Epilepsy. I hope nobody has epilepsy because that's. I listen to uh, Jacob Ooh. Israel, and he connects all kinds of. Okay. Are, are y'all on uh, on YouTube too? Um, uh, yeah, he is. I, that yeah. guy that goes all so over. So does he? Uh, no, I don't. No, uh, I don't. I, I don't go all over. On, on yeah. I like to go to Israel though. Yeah. I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a blessing. You, you know, the, the the best way to make sure that you're gonna you're gonna be there is to is to follow Jesus, right? Stay on the narrow path. Keep following Him. Fix your eyes on him, right? He's the he's the author and finisher of our faith. The one who begins the work, and if we stay with him, he's gonna finish the work. And then, and then when he comes again, then we're gonna meet him in the air right at the Mount of Olives. That's cool. Right in Jerusalem. When he's coming back. We're gonna kick some demon butt. I'm gonna choke him like like Homer Simpson chokes Bart. Well, he, we won't even need to do that. That's right. To he's going to gonna fight for us. Because it says and the that, angels. That the, uh, he's just going to speak the word. That's right. Boom. It's over. Oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah, Amen. I'm help kick his butt. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, and, and, you know, that that's... We get there, to be spectators. If there is a, if there is a, if there is a, uh, a hatred, we are to hate evil. That's right. Okay? Well, the definitely. fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That's and right. so and so the I enemy <laughs> so the enemy <laughs> right yeah. the kisser. <laughs> That's right. And what are you doing out here? Uh, so I was hanging out with my sister in that bar over there, but I... You don't belong in there, huh? Eh, I just had one drink. Yeah. But Jesus drunk proves by it too. <laughs> yeah. He he uh, he would be with sinners in order to help them to stop sinning. Yeah. He would help them. So, so yeah, he, he uh, actually people, they, they got upset and they, they looked at him and they judged him wrongly because he was around tax collectors and prostitutes and yeah. others, right? But, but he was ministering to them, right? He wasn't, he wasn't uh, giving them approval yeah. and saying, well done, good and faithful servant, take another drink, right? Because like the woman that was caught in adultery, they brought her to his feet, remember? And he said, you know, I don't condemn you, but he said, go and sin no more. He didn't say go and sin some more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if we're going to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, then we're actually going to help yeah. people the same way that yeah. he did. Out, right? yeah. I will so, but that's not a miss work. everything thing. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. bro. It's been a while. All right. Here's my bro. Love you, bro. Yeah. All right, bro. All right, bro. Love you, bro. Love you, too. Yeah. Bye. It was nice Love to you. you. I'm Chastina, yeah. by the way. Huh? Chestina. Chestina. Oh, Ch Chestina. Chestina. Christian, nice to meet you. Christian is a good name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Be careful. Yeah, Take care, brother. <laughs> there's, See you uh, tomorrow. There's there's no bondage that that the Lord can't break in our life. That's right. Definitely. Right. Because my my life was consumed by you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too yeah. much. The Lord. And I let I let Jesus take that demon and drag it out of me and beat it with a stick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do anything now. Can deliver from everything, you know, deliver from all dark cigarettes. Huh. <laughs> I yeah. can't shake them off. You can yeah. shake it off, yeah. God will help you, right? Yeah. I bet I bet you could take it, I could take it over to that can and you could shake it right in there. Yeah. And you could beat it with a stick too, if you want. Yeah. You, you can shake it in there, beat it with and a stick. You lift up your hands to the Lord. He says, He says, lift up holy hands. I think he's gonna have to yank me up out of my ponytail. <laughs> you know, he says if your hand, so you you use your hand to smoke, and you know that does bad for your body. Yeah. So he says if your right hand causes you sin, cut it off. Mm -hmm. He's not telling you to actually cut your hand off, but he's saying whatever it is, whatever it is in your life, it might be painful to go and throw it in the garbage can and run. <laughs> You might be like, oh, I really want that. Oh, and you get on your face before God, Lord, I really want that cigarette, but I'm. 
I'm submitting to you. I want you more. Hey, I'm man. going through pain, and you go through the pain, and then the Lord will deliver you. That's right. He'll heal you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He went through pain for us to be healed. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. He went through pain. So he tells us to pick up our cross, mm -hmm. deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Mm -hmm. And then what's after the cross? Resurrection. Right? Yeah. On the other side of the cross is resurrection. So whatever it is where he tells us to deny ourselves, like deny that, deny that thing, uh, it's a cross. And a cross is a painful thing. It's not, it's not a necklace. Yeah. A cross isn't a necklace. A cross is a painful dying to something in our life. Yeah. So that's what you have the opportunity to do with those cigarettes to die to them it's going to be painful but just remember you do that for the lord out of love he's going to bring resurrection into your life he's going to raise you up from that and you're going to have newness of life you're going to be right. free from that you're going to have newness Amen. of life yeah. right mm -hmm. he's going to fill you up in ways cigarettes can't fill you up they leave you empty they harm you he won't harm you he doesn't harm you Amen. Mm -hmm. stress. <laughs> I wish the stress wouldn't be so bad. So I would encourage you to do that. Yeah. I encourage you to do that. Pray for me. <laughs> pray for me. Okay. Ch Chestina. Chestina. Okay, I'll pray for you right now. Yeah. Our Lord, let's pray for Chestina. Lord, yes. I pray you bless her for her yes, humility Lord. here right now, Lord. You give her grace, Lord, to do what you say in your word, Lord, to cut yes. it off. And I pray, Lord, as she denies herself and herself and takes up her cross and follows you, Lord, that you would raise her up from this, Lord, and deliver her from it, Lord, and heal her from it, Lord, and give her yes. newness of life Amen. and new things in her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Yeshua. He's going to do it. Yeshua. Yeah. I love King Yeshua. Take care. Yeah. Yeshua. Thank you. Yeshua HaMashiach. That's right. Jesus the Messiah. Messiah. And right. Yeshua means salvation. That's right. I love Isaiah. That's right. <laughs> God yeah. has to come our Yeah, that's right. That's right. Good, good. She's ready to go to Israel. That's I'm right. Ready to go home. <laughs> home. Well, hey. I'm going to nap under the table while everybody's partying. Just put some food and wine under the table. And just... Put the wine in the garbage can. <laughs> and uh, food, food's good. Food's good. Here's some, here's some tracks for you. I mean, at the wedding supper. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go. Uh, on the table. Just put some food and wine <laughs> I'm not gonna be sleeping table. at the wedding something. <laughs> no, yeah, you won't be. Sleeping. Not gonna be sleeping there. But we will have rest. Too noisy. <laughs> we will have rest. Real rest. Thank you. Well, All right. You. Take leave, care. I'll leave these around for people. Okay. Oh. Awesome. Bless you for doing that. Thank you. I am the lost one, weak and condemned The one that God wants you to talk to But you're scared you to offend And I am the outcast, rejected inside Who I'm looking for answers But I'm blinded by pride To so come out and preach Preach unto me and tell me the secret to eternity. Be bold and speak and reach out to me. No, I can't save myself, but I want to be free. And there's something inside you I need. Well, there's something deep down inside you I need.